Uther versus Gul'dan. Your soul shall be mine. I will fight with honor. I'm actually going to open more removal heavy against Warlock than Peacekeeper heavy because I just feel like Peacekeeper is good, but it's not really that great early. I don't feel great Peacekeeper in anything early, even a juggler kind of. I just need to, I feel like I just need to kill minions like Juggler and Direwolf and later on I probably want Peacekeepers, but that's going to be like much later. Against like Sea Giants and Dr. Booms. Varen Rinwar, oh that's interesting. Could be tomorrow. Like a nice idea for a deck that I could try. I tried some before, it's, it's actually a pretty fun deck. Senate really didn't want to open myself up to abusive even though I could true silver ice. It's not really the abusive that would really punish me, but more so that uh, I want to save the pyro. Okay, so I, I don't really love Doomsayer and Akla. I feel like if I play it with Akla, he actually could just go face and ignore my Doomsayer. I don't mind playing Doomsayer and Hero Power or Akla Hero Power. Probably just Akla and Hero Power cycle a little bit more here. I'm pretty sure he would be able to one-shot my Akla with either PO or Abusive. Should be fine, though. I can maybe play Doomsayer some other time. Traded that one off. Okay, this seems like a nice little Doomsayer turn. Just to save myself some life. Force some action here. Oh, he's actually letting it go. This is good for me. I mean, even though his boards has more power than before, um, it's easier to deal with now that Death Rolls are gone, and I get a very good Soul and Vigil. I can actually Pyro Soul and Vigil, is that worth it? It clears all the 1-1s. One yeah, it's worth it, because I also leave a 3-1 against the 4-3, which is good. Oh, now I might just want equality. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna have Soul Vigil no matter what, so my power's gonna die. Yeah, let's go ahead and just do quality here. The light protects me. Get in there and fight, maggot! This is pretty aggressive. Okay. Lost his PO, which is good. Follow the rule. The battle If he's running like Squires, Flame Imps, and Dim Guard, it's like a really aggressive zoo. True server is like mandatory in this deck just because as a control deck you're like if you replace them with minions that are just tech cards uh, like the deck core the core will suffer you just won't have enough removal For justice. Last warning. then you're basically drawing just the charger murlocs for removal Let's see, there are a couple flex cards. I think I think uh, humility. You can you can have anywhere between one zero to two humilities. 
Uh, you could have one Belcher, I guess. Probably a flex slot. Those are the ones that I've been flexing the most. The second Belcher and the two Humility slots. I'm just gonna go all for equality, true silver, and doomsayer, I think. <laughs> Greetings. Well met. Reporting for duty. I feel like I'm okay if he coins out Acolyte of Pain, because at least he has his coin for that. I don't have much of a curve here, so I'll just be here powering here. I guess, uh, like if I had something to follow up True Silver where I can use the 4 mana here, but I don't really have anything to do on turn 5 either. As of now, we're basically just trying to remove his minions, I guess, just like he's trying to remove ours, but no one really has anything for now. Uh, probably just wait for laying hands. I haven't really seen any versions of this deck with like mini button muster anymore. So the important thing was to make the one one, uh, so that if you play Sludge Bell Trek and one shot it, it's pretty nice. We do need to do some calculations for land hands uh, soon. So, if we land hands, if we have six cards, we can have seven cards land hands go to six, then nine, then ten. So, we need to have seven cards on turn eight at the start. So, we need to play one card this turn. Shouldn't be too hard to play one card. Oh, actually, I miscalculated. We need to go to seven cards at the beginning of our next turn. So we'll sell eight cards. Uh, still not able to land hands. Oops. Although, I don't know if we could have really played anything to, to get down to that little cards. For justice. I didn't really need to humiliate that. It's just like I wanted to go down to seven cards at the beginning of next turn. I hope I don't get Harrison here. It's just I had a, I had a four one truth for last turn. I didn't get Harrison, so I was thinking maybe it's not that likely to get Harrison. And if I'm gonna play land hands, then it's nice to have some stuff on board, like more power on board instead of a heal bot. Because I also lose the heal. I can kill a six health minion right now with this, this board setup. Dr. Boom, we can Humility it. At this point, I think we want to cycle. So we need to be able to try to um, play out a lot of cards here, especially with Acolyte. Right now it's too dangerous to play all these cards.
I definitely would prefer to just like me kill Macklet or something. Uh, feels a little bit dangerous right now with overdraw. If he, over, he if he draws me like three one health swings, he can overdraw me by one. His deck seems kind of like minion, minion light, heavy removal, four, five, nine cards in my hand. So he's basically getting like four armor turn. Uh, I can't let him get too much. It's like eventually I could. He could just have so much life I can't kill him with the second any fins, even. We'll see. I mean. I think we want to go for either four Murlocs. So if we get all five of our Murlocs, it's, it's ideal, but if we get our second any fin and four Murlocs, we'll just start going for it. I think it'll work out better. So we're still actually like only at the two Murlocs, uh, three with this war leader. So there's no point in us trying to play anything out too fast. Uh, not not a lot of minions. Just gonna go ahead and play power so I can get more power on board. Um, I have equal to consecrate anyways. Probably should have swung eventually. Just because I'm always gonna control his minions with with my uh, hand for now. So. Event like I knew he didn't have Harrison, but eventually he'll draw it, so I probably should have swung at some point. <coughs> Still need to wait a little bit, unfortunately. It won't really come down to fatigue, I think. Uh, next turn, I might even just go land hands because every turn is better for him and tank up. So I do need to like accelerate the pace. Land hands should draw me either either the Doomsayer or the Blue Warrior when I have this little cards. So I should be able to still play something and not mill. Well, that changes things. I'll probably just go ahead and kill that. Might be able to just pull, pull out my Murloc here. So right now we have one more blue guild and one more war leader in our deck. Now that we have two any fins, uh, I think, well, we definitely have to wait for one more murloc. If we play any fin with three and the second any fin zone and six murlocs, we definitely get seven on this on the second any fin. We can do four into seven is fine. Five into seven is fine. It's just the second one matters the most. So as long as you get seven with the second any fin. Okay, so I can just Peacekeeper this, go face for six, and hopefully top deck a Murloc. Nice. Follow the rule. So next turn we can either start double anything if we top deck the War Leader. Uh, how much more damage will we do on the first one? There's two chargers, three chargers, one more Murlocs, so seven more damage. 
I believe, which is worth more than four armor. I don't know if it's better on the second Anyfin to have more war leaders, though. It kind of depends. So on Blue Gill War never died. Then he finds I'm gonna res that one. So it's only gonna res one Blue Gill Warrior, one War Leader, and one Murka. That's three Murlocs. Hopefully we top tackle War Leader here. I need the room. <clears throat> if he doesn't play anything, I don't get these two because they haven't died, but I get you know one Warleader, one Bluegill, and one Murkai. So I can't make a hero power or I'll not have slots if he just hero powers and doesn't kill anything. He's gonna have to like after the first anything, he's gonna have to clear anyways for the second one. Like he can't just leave up my board. Or is this board he can kinda leave up, it's not enough power. Hoping that my slimes don't win the brawl, any one of them would be bad. Uh, hmm. My kids suicide them, but then I have to blow another Murloc into the slime after the sludge belcher. I don't know if that's worth it to do that. Would have lost like five damage for that play. Oh, I don't know why I didn't wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, never mind. That, those were non chargers. I was gonna say, why don't you trade a war leader in for the Belcher? But no. Uh, kind of trade a war leader in for Belcher. I don't know why I attacked that. It's, he's just taking more damage. So it looks like it's not lethal, but he's already used both rolls. Um, revenge. I could lose this game still. There's no point in me not attacking outside of revenge range, because he can just attack his weapon in and revenge anyways. Even if I left him at 17, there's no way I can leave him at like 27. That doesn't make any sense, I think. Maybe? Hmm. I've got the beast in my side. Well, this is looking really close. It's actually not looking very good. They're all legendaries. A lot of stuff will just lose me in the game here, I think. I think so. I think it's not looking good. Not sure what the odds are. Three random legendaries. He's fatiguing soonish too. Actually, there's not that many legendaries or taunts. But I was thinking something like I don't know actually. Some like Baron Gatton that would kill my guys. I don't know. Behold the armies of Very Unigrand. Wow, I think he's just dead because he mills himself or not. <laughs> Get 
I guess he would have died 100%. Might as well play Varian Rune. with honor. I like Acolyte. It's just like, kind of like a health sponge a little bit that cycles against Rogue. Most of our good turns against Rogue start at turn four with True Silver. Uh, so our early turns is like, neither person's really doing that much if it's a standard Rogue that's not running early games, minions. Let me think about this for a second, so... I'm just gonna play Acolyte here. I was thinking playing War Leader, that way I can charge for four with Booga Warrior, but uh, it's as a rogue, it's kind of too easy for him to kill the War Leader. Just like one backstab would kill it, so... Like, at least this way, just kind of makes him with effort to one-shot this, and it cycles. And I can always save War Leader for turn five with Booga Warrior. So looks like I don't get punished for playing this. It's not that bad to play the Blue Girl Warrior here. Because he has a 3-1 weapon. It's just the reason why I don't like it is because I don't have other like True Silver type cards in my hand. If I had True Silver, I definitely would have played Blue Girl Warrior. But I don't, I don't have any way to deal Azure Drake. And if you just Vandize this turn, I don't have any follow up in turn 5. Kind of, so I'd rather save it. I feel like I'm probably going to have to equality soon anyways. Even if I humility this and he plays an Azure Drake, I feel like I would have to equality soon there. Gonna clear this board, set for laying hands next turn. Good thing is this weapon like doesn't really have an efficient trade into this. Bad thing is I have no other equality activator for now, but I feel like with laying hands I should be able to get another activator soon. Um Yeah, I'm a full-time Hearthstone player. Technically. Okay, that's very good for me. No Sprint, no Dr. Boom, and like no Azure Drake. This is kind of weak board. I can easily lay hands against this board. Now I get my second activator here. Un Unfortunately, I don't have truths over the little game. It's like one of the best cards against Rogue. That's pretty scary, Cold Blood. I don't know, if he's running Miracle, maybe? Okay. Quality, Consecrate, we have four more mana. Any fins we have both in our hand. Merc eyes have been played, both of these. Okay, I see it, I know what to do. I 
We can kill him at two anything's. Because each anything will be, let's see, first one will be two blue gills, two war leaders, which is uh, already 12 damage. Second one will kill him. Should be better than playing True Silver because I get an extra blue gill warrior. So if I anything trade, we can get him to 14 and then the second anything might still kill him. Might be a better, like a safer way to play. Yeah. From doing the math against priests when your uh, Merc Eye gets entombed, I think no matter how you spin it, if you have seven Murloc Warriors or War Leaders, it's either 30 or 32 damage. Just to have another Murloc that died. It's the same thing, like playing any Finn or Soothsang at first, but makes me have more Blue Gold Warriors that have died. I think that's good, especially if I don't have Merc I played.